Hello, I am Dr. LeWaiters and today we are going to do experiment one, which is the density of water and copper. We're also going to do density of an unknown liquid and an unknown solid. Uh, so first density, lowercase d is my abbreviation for density. Uh, the dimensions are going to be mass divided by volume. Mass is a lowercase m, volume is an uppercase V. In chemistry, when we are doing the density of solids and liquids, we are going to use mass units in grams, lowercase g, and volume units we will use in milliliters, lowercase m capital L for the abbreviation for milliliters. So the first density we're going to do is the density of water. In order to find the density of water, we're going to run an experiment to find the mass of water in grams, and we are going to find the volume of water, of that same water, in milliliters. And when we take the mass and divide by the volume, we will get the density of water. Again, we want the mass of just water, the volume of just water, and that is going to give us the density of water. The next experiment is going to be doing the density of copper. Copper, of course, is a solid, so this is going to be a different procedure. Again, we are going to need the mass of copper in grams and the volume of copper in milliliters. All right, uh, on the report sheet, you will have to come back to this. Uh, and see these calculations on your report sheet. All right, I have an example of calculations for the percent error and for standard deviation. All right, so I have an example. The example is I ran the reactions, uh, experiments in the lab, uh, and I have my calculations already. So this is just made up. We're going to do these and we'll have to calculate these ourselves. So if our numbers were 9.2 for run one for the density of copper, 8.8 .8 for the density in run two, and 9.1 for the density in run three, we would then take the average. In order to take an average, you add up the three numbers and you divide by three. All right, and now when we are in lab, we do everything using significant figure rules. So when you add these three numbers, 9.2, 8.8, 9.1, you have to use the addition rule, which is give your answer to the least number of decimal places. One decimal, one decimal, one decimal, and so your answer must have one decimal. If you push this in your calculator, it is going to say 27. You must write 27.0. Now you're going to divide that by three. Now three is the number of times that we did it. We did it a perfect three times. That is a perfect number, which means it has no error, which means it has an infinite number of significant figures. So when we take our 27.0 and divide by three, we are doing now a division and we're looking at the number of sig figs. So 27.0 has three significant figures. We're dividing it by a perfect number, three runs. And when you do your division, you give your answer to the least number of significant figures in your calculation. So three is less than infinity, and so you give your answer to three sig figs. Now your calculator reads nine. You must put in 9.00 grams per milliliter in order to get that to three significant figures. All right, so now we're going to find the percent error. To get percent error, you find your experimental, your average value, all right, which we found just above was 9.00, minus the theoretical. On your report sheet, the theoretical is given as 8.92, and then you divide that difference by the theoretical value, and then you multiply by 100 to get percent. All right, so here I plugged in the numbers. 
9.00, that was our average that we calculated with our example data, minus the 8.92, which is the given theoretical value for the density of copper, and that's divided by the 8.92 times 100 will give us our percent error. So when we do our subtraction, we have two decimals minus two decimals. And so our answer has to be given to two decimals. So 0 0.08, that's what the calculator says. And that's all we need, 0 0.08 divided by 8.92. So that was a subtraction. We use the subtraction rule, decimal places, two decimals, two decimals, two decimals. Now we're doing a division and we have to use the number of significant figures. So 0 0.08 only has one significant figure. The 8.92 has three significant figures. And so uh, the times 100, the 100 is a perfect number. It will never determine the number of sig figs. Anytime you're doing a percent, that will the times 100 will never be the determination for sig figs. That is a perfect 100. All right, so one sig fig divided by three sig figs, we give our answer to one sig fig. So rounded correctly, you get 0.9%. That is how you would calculate the percent error. So every time you do percent error, you have to follow the sig fig rules. All right, now standard deviation. One good thing about standard deviation is that you will always give standard deviation to one sig fig. You don't have to worry about bringing your sig figs along and doing anything with that. Whenever you're done with your standard deviation, you always give the standard deviation to one significant figure. All right, and so here's the bad news. It's a more complicated uh, equation. And so <clears throat> to get your standard deviation, you take the run one value, subtract the average value in parentheses, and then you square it. You add to that the run two value minus the average value in parentheses, and you square that. You add to that the difference of run three and the average value in parentheses, and you square that. Then you divide that by the number of times that you did the experiment. In this case, we did it three times, minus one. And then all of that is under the square root symbol. All right, so I plugged in the numbers. Run one, we had 9.2 minus the average of nine squared, plus run two was 8.8 .8 minus the average of 9.00 squared, plus run three value, 9.1 minus 9.00 in parentheses squared, divided by, we did it three times, minus one. That is all under the square root. And so I calculated the numerator here and you get 0 0.09. It happened to come out to be a 0 0.09. And that is now divided by the three minus one, which is two, all under the square root. And when you push that on your calculator, you get 0.2. One significant figure. You don't have to calculate any significant figures. When you're done with the standard deviation, it's always given to one significant figure. Not one decimal place, one significant figure. In this case, it is also one decimal place. The rule is you give one significant figure. And so now we go back to our average. And so our average was 9.00 following our sig fig rules. Now we're gonna write the average using the standard deviation. The standard deviation tells us that the error is in the first decimal. And so we always estimate one number. So we have to always give a number that has some uncertainty. We don't give more than one number that has uncertainty, only one number that has some uncertainty. And so our number that has some uncertainty is our first decimal place. It is uncertain by 0.2. That is what the standard deviation tells us. And so since our standard deviation is in the first decimal, we can only report our answer to the first decimal. 
And so rounded correctly, 9.0 plus or minus 0 0.2 grams per milliliter is the correct way to report this average. All right, so now we're ready to get our, our own data and do our own calculations. All right, so here is the setup. We're going to use a four decimal place balance. Uh, this is our 50 milliliter graduated cylinder that we're going to use with our deionized water. DI is uh, abbreviation for deionized water. Next to that, we have our unknown liquid with our 10 mil graduated cylinder needed for our unknown liquid. Over here we have our pennies, and so our pennies are our old pennies, and so they are 97.5% copper versus the new pennies, which are 2.5% copper. So I had to check the dates, make sure that those were all uh, older than 1982, and now uh, we have our three beakers to weigh our three different uh, amounts of pennies. And we have extra 50 mil graduated cylinders for our calculation for the density of copper. And then we have our unknown solid that we will have to write an experiment procedure for uh, and get the density of our unknown. All right, so I'm gonna set this down and do the experiment. All right. Hello, I'm Dr. Waiters, and uh, first we are going to get our density of water. All right, and so I'm going to push the tear button on our balance, and so that sets it to zero. Uh, and I'm going to now weigh our 50 mil graduated cylinder. And the mass of our 50 mil graduated cylinder is 76.5602. So 76.5602 grams. That is the mass of the graduated cylinder, a 50 mil graduated cylinder. So now the procedure says to add between 30 and 40 milliliters of deionized water. So since I'm going to add so much, I took the top off so I could pour. All right, so I'm between 30 and 40, and so I'm stopped putting in the deionized water. All right, and we will need the volume of this water. And so we will have to read our graduated cylinder. And the graduated cylinder is, uh, you can see the 40 here and the 50 here, all right? And so there are 10 marks between the 40 and the 50. And so each one of those is one milliliter. And you always have to estimate one number. And when you're reading a volume, you're looking at the bottom of the meniscus. And it makes a little curve. Uh, and you want to read the bottom of that curve, and that is called the bottom of the meniscus. You want to get at eye level, and you will want to read that value. And so that is 33.1 milliliters. So the volume of the water is 33.1 milliliters. And now it says to weigh it. So we check to make sure we're at zero on our balance and it's in grams. That is correct. We are going to put this on here, close it, and we will get our mass. So now the mass of the graduated cylinder and the water is 109.2267. 109.2267. All right, so we have the mass of the graduated cylinder empty. We have the mass of the graduated cylinder and water. We don't want either one of those numbers. We want just the mass of water. We can't just pour water on there and weigh it. It would go all over the place. And so we had to put it in a container to weigh it. 
All right, and so you'll have to figure out, since we have the mass of both the graduated cylinder and the water, and the mass of just the graduated cylinder, how to get the mass of just the water. All right, and so that is all the information that we need to find the density of water. All right, so now let's go to the density of copper. Now, copper is a solid. We can't pour a solid into a graduated cylinder and read the volume of it. So what we're going to do to get the volume is we're going to add the solid into your graduated cylinder that already has water. And then we're going to get all the air bubbles that might be in there. And we're going to see how much the volume of the water goes up. So of course you put something in the water and that's taking up some volume. And we can measure that volume by how much the water level is going up. Uh, but first we need to have a mass of our solid. Alright, so first I'm going to weigh a uh, beaker. And so it's at zero. I'm putting the beaker on. This beaker has a mass of 50.5436. So 50.5436 grams. All right, and so now I'm going to add some pennies, and it says to add between 10 and 15 pennies. So the first time that I'm going to do it, I'm going to add 10 pennies. All right, and so I'm going to count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exactly 10 pennies. All right, and so I'm going to put them on the balance. That was reading 0.000. .000. And we have our new reading, 81.5646. 81.5646. All right. So again, I don't want to put the copper pennies on the balance. I would have to push down on the balance in order to get my fingers underneath the pennies and pick it off. And that's going to damage this very sensitive balance. And so I had to put it in some sort of container, and I decided to go with a beaker. All right, so again, I don't have the mass of the pennies by themselves. I have the mass of the beaker empty, and now I have the mass of the beakers and the beaker and the pennies. And so you have to figure out how to get the mass of the pennies from those two data points. All right, so we are uh, here with our pennies. Now we have the mass of the pennies. You can easily calculate the mass of the pennies. All right, and so now again, we check our volume, and it is at 33.1. That is what we were at before. Now we're gonna put these 10 pennies into the graduated cylinder, and we're gonna put them in without splashing water out. We need to keep the amount of water that's in there. That amount of water has to be the same. No water should be spilled out. No water should be splashed out. And we're going to put in all 10 of our pennies. And of course, pennies have a higher density than water. If it had a lower density than water, then it would float. This has a higher density than, than water, and so it is going down to the bottom. All right, and so now I'm going to tap on it, and you can see some bubbles coming out. When you put the solid in there, you're going to trap some air bubbles. And so I'm going to tap it, get rid of all of the air bubbles. All right. And then I'm going to read the new volume. Of course, I added pennies, and the volume of the water is going to go up. And the volume of water is now 369 36.9 milliliters. All right, and so the 36.9 milliliters is the volume of the pennies and the water. All right, and so we had the water volume all by itself. Now we have the volume of water and pennies. 
from those two data points, you're going to have to figure out what is the volume of the 10 copper pennies. All right, and that is enough information to get the density of the copper. Now we're going to do this three times in order to take an average and then we can take our uh, and get our standard deviation and uh, do those calculations. All right, and so I have another beaker that I'm going to weigh. So this is a different beaker. It's the same size. It's going to have a similar mass, but not identical. Uh, 46.3068. Forty six point three zero six eight grams. All right, and I'm not going to stick with ten pennies. I'm going to add different numbers of pennies. All right, and so this time I have one, two, three, four. pennies. All right, exactly 13 pennies are in this beaker. And so I'm putting that back on. It's at zero now, and now it reads 86.6056. 86.5056. So 0 0.5056. 86.5056. So we need a graduated cylinder that has uh, deionized water in it, between 30 and 40 mils of deionized water. All right, so I think I hit the 30 mil mark. Let's see. Not quite. I'm at a little bit more. It doesn't really matter, but since the directions say between 30 and 40, I'll get it between 30 and 40. All right, 30, 32.1 mil. All right, so 32.1 milliliters, that is the volume of water in our graduated cylinder. And so now again, I'm going to add the 12 pennies I'm going to add them carefully so I don't splash out any water. All right. Sideways, going in slow, no splashing of water. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And all 13 pennies in. All right. Any air bubbles? Some air bubbles coming out. Get out the trapped air bubbles. And we have our new reading. And of course, adding the copper is going to make that water level go up. And we are at 30, 36.9 milliliters. 36.9. All right, and then in order to have three sets of data for our calculations, we're going to run it again. I'm going to put in our deionized water between 30 and 40. I'm going to weigh another beaker. So here's beaker that we're using for run three. This beaker has a mass of 46.3071. 46.3071. That is the beaker empty. This time we're going to add one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Exactly 15 pennies. Put them on the balance. This mass is 92.6. 332. 92.6332. All right, so from those two data points, we will get the mass of pennies. All right, this graduated cylinder, the volume that we're starting with, with water is 32.9 milliliters, 32.9. All right, and so now I'm going to add my 15 pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. have been added. All right, and so now I'm going to tap it to get rid of all of the air bubbles that were trapped in there by adding this solid. Making sure to not splash out any of the water. All right, and now my volume is 30. Thirty-eight point zero. Thirty-eight point zero. All right, and so that is the data that you will need to calculate the density of copper three times, get an average, find a standard deviation. All right. So now we are to do the density of an unknown liquid, and the directions for the unknown liquid are. You must use a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. All right, and so you will have to write this out as a procedure. I'm not going to write it out, but you can kind of just watch here and, and write out what I'm doing. All right, and so the first thing I'm going to do, just like we did with the water, is to weigh my 10 mil graduated cylinder. So the 10 mil graduated cylinder has a mass of 25.4326. 25.4326 grams. All right, and now I have my unknown liquid. And um, just like I did with The water I added, uh, well, I added between 30 and 40. All right, so I'm going to add, it doesn't matter. I'll add this amount. So it doesn't really matter how much of this you add, you just need to have an accurate volume. All right, and so this volume is at. 6.85, 6.85, so 6.85, oh, well, yeah, I should All right, we're going to go with, I got to pick one, uh, we'll go with 6.9, 6.9 mils. Uh, we're going to go with one decimal place on our graduated cylinder, so I had to pick between the two. 6.9 mils is our 
volume to one decimal place. And so now, just like I did with the water, I'm going to weigh it. And so the mass here is 31.6277. 31.6277 grams. All right, and so from that information, you can get the mass of the unknown since we weighed it empty. We weighed it with the liquid. You can now get the mass of the liquid. Uh, the volume of the liquid, we have that as 6.9 milliliters was the volume of liquid that was put in for our unknown liquid. All right, so now we're going to do a procedure for the unknown solid. All right, now the unknown solid had uh, only one stipulation, and that was to use a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. All right, so I have here a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. So it is larger than the others because some unknowns are bigger than other unknowns. All right, and so just like we did with our uh, density of copper, we're going to put in an amount of water. It doesn't matter what the amount of water is. So I'm going to put in that amount. All right, so again, it doesn't matter what the amount of water is as long as you know uh, what volume that we have. And to one decimal place, we have... Fifty six point eight mils. So fifty six point eight milliliters is our initial volume. That is our volume of water. All right. We also need to have a mass of the beaker. The mass of this beaker is twenty seven point three seven zero seven. 27.3707 grams. All right, so now we're going to take our unknown solid and put it carefully in the beaker. If you throw it in the beaker, uh, you might break the beaker. So we put it carefully in the beaker and we are going to weigh it again. This now has a mass of 82.4319. 82.4319 grams. All right, and so just like we did with the pennies, well, we had the mass of the beaker empty. We have the mass of the beaker with the unknown. From those two data points, we know the mass of the unknown. All right, and We have our 56.8 mils of water, and now we're going to carefully add our unknown solid. All right, so we want it to go in there as slow as we can without losing any of our water. pieces than pennies. If these go in too fast, uh, they will go right through and break the glass. So I'm be as careful as I can. All right, now, all right, so they are all underwater, which is extremely important. If you had pieces sticking up out of the water, this would not be an accurate uh, volume. Again, you put in solid into a liquid. You're going to trap some air bubbles. I'm going to tap it to get the air bubbles out, and then I'm going to read the volume. And the volume is 64.9 milliliters. So that is a 64.9 milliliters. And so now you had the volume of water. 
And now you have the volume of the water and the unknown. And so from that you can get the volume of just the unknown. And that concludes experiment one, the density of water and copper as well as an unknown liquid and an unknown solid.